So today's video we look at something I find a lot of players do wrong and me myself included in that I've you know fallen victim to this within World of Tanks console many many times uh, within the game and of course it does lead to some really really bad stuff kind of happening in your games you you'll do on average worse and so this kind of tip or beginner tip or, or intermediate tip or whatever you want to call it We'll basically uh, look at kind of making sure that you choose the right kind of setup for each of your individual tanks because remember each tank in the game is individual each one has its specific great characteristics and so playing to their advantage is something that will make sure that you know you outperform others that play in similar style of tanks or ones that you know they haven't optimized their tank correctly and so we're going to look into that today of course we will start with the LT432 we'll give a few examples as to how you can actually make sure that each of the tanks that you play um, are actually played correctly so LT432 what is kind of special about it well of course it's this really really low profile uh, light tank that has a kind of armor it can actually bounce a few rounds if you're traveling at high speeds and they hit you at a ridiculous angle then yeah, you can bounce a few rounds, unlike most light tanks. So what does that mean? Well, you want to be able to go at top speeds all of the time, or at least for the majority of the time. And so what you want to be doing is because the particular problem with the LT432 is the traverse speed of the tank is fairly poor, like comparatively to some of the other light tanks when you're going at top speed, because the terrain resistances um, tend to be pretty bad. So compared to light tanks that is so they're not awful they're just not as good it doesn't turn as quickly as you'd want it to so how can we combat this well how can we actually change the tank to be able uh, to make sure that that isn't the flaw within this tank well of course what you can do is set up your tank with the right equipment now what I've done in the LT432 of course is get the traction system which allows you to turn 10% faster now that basically negates all of the problems that I had with this tank when I first picked it up I found it was a bit lackluster to be honest with you when I didn't have that on but as soon as I put it on you could feel it instantaneously you got the 10% boost to max speed you've got the chassis and the whole rotation speed up and you've also got superb accuracy on the move, you've got great view range in the tank, you've got also the ability to ram other light tanks, and so yeah, really really perfect tank to be honest with you. And furthermore to the whole whole rotation speed and, and making sure that I can be competitive with other light tanks, because of course when you're fairly like immobile, I would say, well you you can go up to top speed fast, but if you can't turn, then it becomes a little bit less mobile, if that makes sense. So you can't crest the ridge as easily. Whereas now, now that I've added in the horsepower boost from the enhanced fuel boost as well, and the 5% max speed and 10% uh, turret rotation speed, when you have it passively, really, really perfect, to be honest with you. This tank, obviously being a premium tank, allows me to use premium consumables. Yes, I have dropped a med kit for it, but because the med kit is kind of one of those things um, that you kind of just have to have the trade-off, I'm willing to sacrifice the ability to put a crew member back in my tank if the eventuality happens that one of my crew members gets knocked out. Now, what does that mean for the tank? Well, of course, I can now be a lot more competitive than I previously was without any equipment. One of the biggest things I can say to you guys uh, in terms of guiding you as a new player is making sure that you save up your silver to be able to equip your tanks that you are going to be playing. This is really, really crucial for when you get up to tier 8 and the tank's higher than that because you'll be spending a lot more time in each of the tanks and it is 100% worth it because remember if you want to get best at the game or better at the game or you just want to be more competitive have a little bit more fun uh, then definitely making sure that your tank is the best it can be before even like attempting to get better yourself will generally just make you better player because you know you'll have better dpm which means you can put out damage quicker in those occasions where you didn't weren't reloaded it will allow you to reload faster and so having the right equipment is super key and also the consumables as well now as far as another example we'll get off the light tanks we'll go on to something like a heavy tank which a lot of you will actually play now 
let's try and find one that actually has the full equipment in it. Um, yeah, so we'll look at the T34. Now, this one, what is the key thing about the T34? Well, what we'll do is we'll go over to the statistics, we'll have a look at what the kind of key statistics are, and when you're looking at a tank, what do you want to be looking at most? Well, if we go back to the original loadout screen where it shows you off the top right hand corner up here with the penetration damage, blah, 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 blah. What you want to look at is what's the max speed of the tank? What's the damage of the tank? What's the penetration? And then what's the vision and concealment? Because hit points don't really matter, to be honest. You're not going to be, in my personal opinion, you don't ever really want to be putting on the increase um, like or decrease damage from enemies and um, anything that really improves your health because for the most part if you can deal more damage that means that you can be more effective with the hit points that you already have rather than just get, say, getting some extra hit points so yeah definitely go with DPM and some of the other ones over the actual uh, reduction of damage from opponents but yeah with the with the T34 for example you see that it goes 35 kilometers an hour. Well, what does that mean for a tank like this? Well, obviously you're fairly slow, so what are we going to want to do? Um, you could, you know, warrant going up in the speed category, but it's not to the point where it's so slow like a mouse where you would actually want to go a little bit faster. Instead, when you're playing in the T-34, what I go for is making sure that every single damaging shot counts and if you look at the statistics of the vehicle, you'll see that the actual rate of fire is 4.44. So that is with all of the equipment on. Now that is pretty terrible given that you have 400 alpha damage. So you've got a DPM of about 1800 um, with all of the boosts. So that is not the base one. Base DPM on the um, T-34 is somewhere in the region of like 1400 or something. So it's pretty awful. Now, what? why do we want to boost that up? Well, of course, to make this thing more competitive, what we do is we whack on advanced loading to make sure that we reload as fast as possible because this thing gets caught out on its reload a long, long, well, very, very often. We then put gun stabilizer on it because we want to make sure that every single shell that we fire is more accurate and therefore will do more damage. So I hope you guys kind of get what I'm coming from here making sure that your equipment is actually tank specific rather than just going right it's a heavy tank we're going to put on this equipment that i always put on my heavy tanks make sure that you look at the statistics of the vehicle yes most heavy tanks will have the same kind of um, equipment that you'll put on but if you are kind of looking at playing a specific tank maybe you would go with um, something like a spool liner if you're playing in a mouse or something like that whereby it would reduce the explosion defense and so you know when you're moving into position you aren't getting health taken off by artillery as often so that's the sort of thing you want to be looking at when you're playing in your tanks. And of course, making sure that you you do put on enhanced combat rations because these things are probably the most important thing in terms of consumables. If I had to put the consumables out, I would actually swap out um, the, the enhanced repair kit for a standard repair kit and then run rations um, and then if I had to drop out all of them make sure you know you do that with a fire extinguisher or whatever you want to put in um, but yeah 100% use combat rations because that is key I really hope these videos are kind of helping you out with regards to some decision making that you want to do with your tanks um, maybe if we look at a TD build so let's take the Hellcat 105 for example now this is slightly different from what you'd run a heavy tank of course it's a td what are tds meant to do well they're meant to be undetected you want to stay it and keep distance from your enemies make sure that you aren't the one on the front line for the most part you know sometimes you do have to move up in game you can't just snipe at the back and certainly some tank destroyers are more aggressive and you want to be in the front lines but a tank like the hellcat 105 remains undetected that's the sort of place though you want to be doing and so, what do you want to do with it? Well, of course, you want to put advanced concealment on it. You want to put advanced optics to outspot your opponents. And basically, these two pieces of equipment allow you to um, increase your, your concealment so enemies won't spot you as easily. 
and it will mean that it boosts up your ability to spot enemies so not only are you reducing your detectability you're increasing your um you know your detection range so it kind of goes even further outwards from how good it was in the beginning that means you've got a massive um kind of boost against anyone that's going to try and outspot you in the hellcat 105 so that's the kind of thing you want to be doing of course then what you want to do is put on some dpm to boost up that as much as possible you could go with something like speed but for to be honest with you the hellcat 105 goes 65 kilometers an hour so that's not a problem in this td so you wouldn't want to do that and then you've got things like fuel tank which is just a waste of time same with the ammo rack durability kind of a waste of time uh, shell aiming speed this is actually one that a lot of people get caught out with this thing is pointless it's absolutely pointless i would never really recommend advanced gun lane drive it just doesn't really do too much i would rather have the 10 percent bonus to dpm because you can get out 10 well one more shell every 10 shells that also means that your view range is up by 10 percent and i wouldn't sacrifice my camo for the sake of aiming in slightly faster and when you've got an aim time of two seconds, does a 0.2 of a second aiming speed really make that much difference? No, not really, considering when you take a piece of advanced loading, you can actually reload in something like a couple seconds faster, depending on what tank you're actually in. So there we go. Spool liner, sometimes used situational at, at best, and then repair system, probably don't want that in the game. And then advanced suspension, I would never go with this, to be honest. But yeah, Hellcat 105, of course. Now what do you want? To, well, of course, because we don't need the speed, of course we're going to take a med kit. And because this tank is prone to getting HE, often crew members will get taken out in it. And therefore, when you get hit by a HE round, your crew members are more likely to get hit. And hence, we need the med kit rather than a fuel boost in this tank. Also... Make sure you are using the detailed statistics because what this does is allow you to check out the soft terrain resistances, all of the interesting statistics that are very, very useful. Some of them are pointless, don't get me wrong. Some of them are absolutely useless, no point in looking at. But when you pick out the key ones, something like top, top forward speed, top reverse speed, and that is one of the key problems with the Hellcat 105 is the reverse speed so make sure you think about that when you're playing in the tank and you'll do much much better of course rot whole rotation speed is pretty poor along with the turret true um, rotation speed so think about that what are you going to do when you play the tank all of this sort of stuff will make sure that when you play in the game you know what your tank is all about and I think that that is one of the key things within World of Tanks. If you don't know what type of tank or how you're supposed to be playing the tank then how are you going to be able to make decisions that are best for you in every single game and that is where making sure that the right equipment for the tank are in there and also making sure that you know everything you need to know about the tank you're playing will make sure that you get better games and hopefully that comes across quite well. If we look at something yeah, slightly different in terms of a, a, a kind of tank destroyer I guess um, something like the E25 whereas before I would use a camo this one I would actually use you know the speed boost and all of the various different other kind of aspects that you can put in your tank of course some of them can't actually get the auto loading or the loading time because they're auto loaders which means you have to swap out some of the equipment so yeah, when you're playing an auto loader, you might want the loading time, but unfortunately you can't get it. And so you have to sacrifice some of the key things within the game. So think about that. Think about the type of tank that you're playing and hopefully you will actually perform much better. Of course, added, added on to this, you need to be thinking about that when it comes to the crew skills, which is another key aspect um, of making sure that your tank is perfect for the situation of course for most of you if you've only got a couple nine skilled commanders unlike me where i've got about a mountain of them um, where i can have one for each class then you might have a problem with creating a kind of commander build that is usable for all of the tanks within the tech tree that you're on about so think about like skills that are very very useful on every tank that you're going to play in of course we've done a commander system kind of guide in the past so maybe i'll make another updated one with um, a bit more analysis and detail 
But yeah, for the most part, you want to be having Born Leader at Sixth Sense. You definitely want the Accuracy one. You definitely want the DPM, so Steady Aim and Rapid Loading. And then it's really up to you what you want as far as the other perks within the game. Other than that, I think that that is everything for today's video, and I hope you did enjoy. If you did, remember to hit that like button and subscribe for some more. Let me know if I left anything out in the comment section down below and give your thoughts and opinions on equipment setups and making sure that your tank is perfect for the situation that you'll be playing in. Obviously, this is my opinion. I have played 20,000 battles, so I kind of know what I'm doing on the game by now. Um, yeah, just let me know what your thoughts are anyway, and we'll get a bit of a discussion going in the comment section down below. Big shout out to all of our channel members for supporting the channel extra um, using the join link down below. Other than that, I hope you have a great rest of your day and I hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye.